As I mentioned in the introduction to this course, I will start each video with a few slides to introduce you to the goals of that particular video, and then we'll switch to MATLAB and we'll start coding. So the goal of this particular video is to import the data and then convert the data from a matrix of cells to a matrix of numbers. Now, when we first import the data, we will see that the data are organized as a structure with several fields. So the data is called data, and that's one variable. It's a structure, and it contains these four fields. In particular, we are most interested in this field called events. So this field is three-dimensional. It's a cell array, so it's a matrix of cells. And the dimensions correspond to neurons, stimulus orientations, and repetitions. So the researchers here identified 106 cells from this 10 by 10 recording array. And there were 12 stimulus orientations, and each stimulus was presented 200 times. Okay, and here you can see I'm just slicing a little bit of this data. So we're just indexing the data to have a little bit of a, of a glance at, at what these data look like. So you can see that each element is its own cell. You can see cells in MATLAB are indicated by curly brackets. Now, each of these cells contains numbers and a different number of numbers. And these correspond to the timing of the action potentials in each of those trials. So this particular cell, there's one number in here. So that means that this was neuron one and stimulus orientation one and trial one. And this neuron emitted exactly one action potential at 0.41 seconds. And then in this case, we see that the neuron emitted five action potentials. Now, in certain kinds of analyses, you want to know the exact timing of each action potential. But here, for our purposes, we don't care about the timing. What we care about is the number of action potentials in each trial. So therefore, what we want to do is convert this data matrix from a cell matrix of cells into a matrix of numbers. So the result of this video is going to be a variable that's called total spike count. You can see it's the, the same size as our cell array here, except this is a matrix of cells. This is a matrix of numbers or double precision numbers. And the numbers here correspond to the number of action potentials in each trial. So that's actually just the, the total number of numbers within the cell. Okay, so this is our primary goal for this video. So if you would like to pause the video, work through the partially completed MATLAB code, then now is your opportunity to do that. When you're ready, you can come back to the video and watch me walk you through my solution. There are several ways to import data into MATLAB. And right now I'm going to show you two ways to import data. So one way is through the menu options here. So we click home and import data. And that opens up this uh, window here. You can select the data set, so the mat file that you want to import. That will open up a second dialog box that looks like this. And this basically gives you a list of all the variables inside that data set. And uh, if you don't want to, you know, if you want to import only some of them, you can, you can uncheck certain variables. In this case, we want to import all of the data. So now I will click Finish. And now we can type whose, inspect the workspace, and you can see that we have this variable here called data. It is a structure, and we can just type data and enter to see all of the fields in this structure, just like what I showed in the slides. Now, importing data manually like this is okay if you only need to import data once in a while or if you're just testing something. But when you're writing scripts, when you're writing code, then it's a better idea to have the data importing be uh, written in the script as code like this, so it's automated. Now, this line of code is going to produce an error if you are not in the same directory as the data file or if the data file is not in the MATLAB path. So if you get an error message when you try to load in these data, then you can check that the MATLAB current working directory is the same as where you stored that data file. Okay, so now let's start converting. So before we do the uh, data conversion, we need to initialize a data matrix. So we are going to initialize this matrix with zeros. So it's going to start off as being a matrix of all zeros, and then we're going to populate that matrix with the data, as I showed in the slides. Okay, so what I'm doing here is using the size function to tell me the number of neurons, the number of gradings, and the number of trials that are contained in this data set. 
Now, on the one hand, you know, we have these numbers right here. So you could say, you know, well, let's just write that this zeros matrix could be 106 by 12 by 200. And this does work for this particular data file, but a different data file is going to have a different number of trials or a different number of neurons. So therefore, it's better to soft code this. So we just read out the size of the data file, the data matrix that we need. And then I'm actually even just going to copy and paste this directly into here. So now this code is going to work. It's going to produce a zeros matrix of the correct size, regardless of the size of the original data that we load in. Okay, so now we have our uh, our data matrix. And here what we have is a triple for loop. It's a lot of for loops. So we are looping over basically the three different dimensions in that data matrix. So we're looping over neurons, we're looping over gradings, so stimulus orientations, and we're looping over trials or repetitions. And now we need to know the number of spikes in each cell. So how do we how do we get this information? Let's start by just looking at one of these cell arrays. So we type data.events, and then let's look at the first neuron, and how about the fourth stimulus orientation, and maybe the ninth trial. Notice here I'm indexing a cell array using curly brackets. That's often a, that's, that's a source of confusion for people who are new to MATLAB, is when you should use different kinds of brackets because there's parentheses, there's square brackets, and there's curly brackets. So curly brackets are used for um, indexing and ac accessing cells. Okay, so this one happens to be empty. There wasn't a spike. Let's try 91, and here we get two. So what we want to know is how big is each of these cells. So how many elements are in each cell? This one has zero elements. This one has two elements. So to do that, I'm going to use the function numl. So this function stands for number of elements. And that's going to return, in this case, two, because this cell has two elements in it. Okay, so now I'm going to copy and paste this code here. Now, this code is not correct right here because this is going to populate the entire data matrix with the same number. So this needs to be changed. This is from neuron i, so the, the ith neuron index, the ith gradient index, or stimulus orientation, and then trial i. Okay, so now we can run all of this code here, and it takes about a second or so to run. And now let's have a, a quick peek at this data matrix. So total spike count. And let's look at neurons one through four, gradients uh, about four through six, and let's just say trial three. Okay, so there, you know, I just wanted to have a look at this just to make sure that we're not getting the matrix of all zeros, you know, that would indicate that something went wrong. Or if these are all NANs, that would also mean that there was a problem with our code somehow. Now, for loops are fine. There's nothing really wrong with for loops, but for loops do have a couple of disadvantages. They can slow down your code and they can also make it easier to make mistakes. So whenever possible, you should look at your for loops and, and think about whether it's possible to reduce the number of for loops through vectorization. You will see several examples of this throughout the course. Now I'm going to introduce you to one method that we can use uh, to replace this triple for loop, and that is using the cell fun function. So this function, cell fun, allows us to apply a particular function to a cell. So the function that we want to apply is length. I could have also used length here instead of numl, but I'm just giving you a little bit of diversity here. So length, we want to apply the function length to the data matrix data.events. So what this is going to return is a matrix that tells me the length of each cell in this array here. So let's have a look at this. Okay, so you can see that ran faster, and it's also, you know, it's just one line of code instead of this triple for loop over here. Okay, now how do we know that this is the same matrix, that this is the same data, the same result as this, the result of this triple for loop? Well, you know, you can just take my word for it, but I, I don't recommend that. We're going to check that these two are the same matrices in two ways. First of all, we're going to check their sizes, make sure that these are the same size. So they are the same size, which is good. That doesn't prove that they have the same elements, the same content, but uh, that's a start. And then the next thing I'm going to do is subtract one matrix from the other. So the logic is that 
if matrix A equals matrix B, then matrix A minus B equals zero. So subtract these two, and I expect that this difference matrix is all zeros. If it isn't all zeros, then that means that, you know, that, that this is not a valid substitute for this, or that we made a coding error somewhere. Okay, now we can sum all of this. So this is a, a really big matrix. So what I want to do is just say, you know, are there, are, is this all zeros or are there any non-zero elements? Now we can just write this here in sum, but this is going to sum over the rows. So this is going to be like a really big result. It's kind of hard to look at, although you can see that there's a lot of zeros here. So therefore what I'm going to do is something called vectorization. So I put a parenthesis and then a colon and then a parenthesis again. And this converts the matrix into a vector. So we can just have a quick look at this. I'll write size. And then with the vectorization, we just get one really, really long vector. So it just took this whole matrix, this 3D cube of data, stretched it out into one vector. And now we can sum that vector and we get zero. So that confirms that this method perfectly reproduces this method with fewer lines of code, less possibility for errors because we don't have to worry about indexing. And it turns out that this is also computationally faster. So I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next video, we're gonna start working with these data and doing some histogram visualizations.